Should boycotting make a comeback in the Black community? Throughout history, boycotts have been a public statement to governments, businesses, and other powerful entities that the true power resides with the people. Stakeholders are forced to make compromises and changes to ensure that major losses aren't incurred as a result. But do boycotts actually influence and initiate real change, or is it just a political statement? Do civil rights movements create real movement? What's different? The buses are empty. Why? Because the Negro people aren't riding them. Because one woman, a seamstress, tired after a hard day's work, got fed up with her 40 years of living under Jim Crow. Because one woman said, I have had enough. And suddenly, just like that, 50,000 voices answered, Amen, sister, enough for us too. For refusing to give up her seat to a white man, she was arrested and fined. And the Negro people of Montgomery have refused to ride the buses ever since. They walked instead. They rode in cars, their own cars, instead of anyone who would give them a lift. The buses waited still and lonely in their silent rows, or rode empty through the streets. They were threatened and intimidated, arrested, convicted and fined, and still they walked. In the rain and the sun and the dark of night, they walked with God and shunned the buses. They walked with God and they rode with God too, for they formed a carpool that was a marvel of quick organization. A network of cars, old and new, of trucks and taxis, reached out across the city and carried people where they wanted to go. It started as a one-day protest, nothing more but it grew until it rocked the cradle of the Confederacy and told the world a story of Negro people united for action without bitterness, without malice, without fear. Black residents in Montgomery refused to ride city buses for 13 months. As a result, the city of Montgomery took a hit of $3,000 a day for 381 days. Let's do the math. Montgomery incurred a loss of over $1 million because of the boycott. A few weeks ago, J.P. Morgan Chase announced that they have kicked Ye out of their bank. They refused to continue business with him due to his alleged anti-Semitic remarks. He has until November 21st to find another financial institution. In 2005, J.P. Morgan Chase openly admitted and acknowledged the role their institution played in the transatlantic slave trade. Next question uh, has to do with something near and dear to my heart. My ancestors were slaves. In 2005, is it true that J.P. Morgan released information uh, uh, directly indicating that it directly benefited from slavery? Would the representative from J.P. Morgan respond? I do believe that in 2005 we made a report about potential transactions that involved slavery between J.P. Morgan or its heritage companies uh, back in the 1800s. In fact, there was an indication, I believe, that uh, you accepted loans against uh, slaves as collateral, true? I believe that to be true, yes. Uh, for edification purposes, have any of the other banks compiled a study as to whether or not you have benefited from slavery? If so, raise your hand, please. Let the record reflect that none have raised a hand. It's clear to see that the black community must come together to stand against atrocities and form real plans to unify and strengthen ourselves against those who continue to keep us in a state of submission and oppression. Yay being kicked out of America's second largest bank is evidence of that. The black community used to stand up against oppression and fight back. What happened to our zeal, our passion, our grit? There are more of our people standing for LGBTQIA plus and abortion rights than the rights of the black community. What a travesty. It's quite clear the actions that need to take place to move toward a more equitable future for us and the generations to come. We must take a firm stand against those who only see our value as a check in their pockets. We've seen positive examples from our ancestors. We do not have to do business with corporations who do not respect us. Similar to Jewish communities, we need to operate as one and move together in unity. Support Black-owned businesses. Do business with Black-owned banks. Boycott companies like Adidas, Vogue, Balenciaga, Prada, Dolce & Gabbana, Louis Vuitton, Burberry, Como de Garcon, Tommy Hilfiger, Barney's, Dior, Gucci, and H&M. 
We do not have to settle for what seems convenient at the time. We work hard for everyone else's causes. It's time to put our interests first, and we can. Supporting our oppressors is supporting our oppression.